Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Geek Centric Podcast. My name is Nate. How are you doing today? Hi, oh, Nate. Hey, Nate. Geek Centric, did you say? Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah, we're, we're, we're eccentric about all things uh, geek. And I got to say, I'm eccentric about this show. Uh, it is excellent. I'm a big fan of all three of you. And I can tell it's it's really something special. But I, I'd love to know from each of you, uh, starting with Enyi, what makes this show so special to you? Wow. I think... Um... I think it's a period drama like I haven't seen before. Tapping mm -hmm. into the folklore and the magic and really giving it life and turning it into a fantasy series. But not only that, not getting so caught up in the etiquette like we sometimes do in this country when we make period dramas and getting mm -hmm. to the heart of characters. So it's about people as well. And the and Renegade now, the main person, is being played so beautifully like by Louisa. I think it's, yeah she leads the show so well it's written so well it's a great time mm. fantastic yeah Jolie what about yourself um I I think of it like you know the great cartoons and then you'd say to an adult oh go and see it and they and I'd say oh no I'm not really into cartoons and then like trust me it's funny it's smart it takes you on an adventure and that's how I feel about Renegade now it, it just sort of when I sat down at the screening, the cast and crew and saw episodes one and two that I'm not in, I was just like, oh, this is good. These characters are charming. It's funny. I'm intrigued by this sort of dark magic and then mm. later the lighter magic. It, it uh, yeah, the, I just, it, it, it's got some next level thing going for it. Mm. Fantastic. Frank? Yeah, I think this like uh, period drama mixed with, the uh with all the magic is what uh interests interested me that the sally's created this world that is kind of mm, very it's like limitless but also is it just personally speaking it's very much like my taste you know i like i love fantasy i love fairies and wigs and all of that stuff so it kind of <laughs> falls like perfectly fairies and wigs fairies and wigs it falls perfectly in that sort of like uh that realm of interest that I, I like yeah i would uh, i would share that exact same sentiment sentiment as, as all of you i speaking of wigs i actually kind of have a little bit of fun here uh all three of you get to rock some incredible outfits uh in this show i think the whole cast gets to rock some incredible outfits but i wanted to get some quick uh 18th century style tips uh from the three of you starting <laughs> with frank you know should i go with uh if i'm going out on the town like powdered periwig or tricorn hat what am i rocking um, I, I personally, I, I was, I'm a, I'm, I'm a wig guy without a hat just because I think the wig okay. is so amazing. Although I did have a hat and a wig at one point, but, um, I don't know if you, you might have to wear a hat back in the day. I think it was bad etiquette to be hatless when you're outside. Um, are those wigs itchy at all or are they soft? I've always wanted to know. Mm, sweaty. They're a bit hot and sweaty. Yeah. Okay. They are a bit hot and sweaty. <laughs> And having a Excellent. lot of glue around your face is particular and having all your hair sort of scrunched up mm. underneath yeah. it is particular. Mm. Awesome. Uh, any frock coat or do I go with a decorative corset? Wow. Corset all the all the way. If you if yeah. you don't but listen, as someone who doesn't regularly wear corsets, maybe that's a mistake. But I think a decorative corset sounds lovely. Fantastic. I'd love okay, to see and then you in a uh, the most, <laughs> the most stylish on the show, uh, Jolie. Uh, do I go stockings or no stockings? Oh, we can do better than that. Surely, I thought you were going to say like amazing cape. Well, he is. He's got fantastic. he's got a big wig on. He's got a corset, and now stockings, I'm seeing no trousers. Of is what I'm seeing. Sto <laughs> and I stockings, stockings right? and a heel. <laughs> Silk stockings. Come on, let's get specific. Silk stockings with garters yeah. and a heel, okay. oh, and you're set. Mm. Oh me, oh my, I love it. Oh, yeah, me, yeah, oh my, I love it. Okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling <laughs> fancy. I'm feeling ready yeah. to go to the party. Yeah. Can you imagine how fabulous it would be if we had a renegade now party and everyone came dressed as one of the characters? Yeah. A Halloween thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, no. if I'm invited, I'd be, I'd be happy, happy to uh, attend. <laughs> um, oh, lastly, I just wanted to mention, like. The locations in this show are incredibly gorgeous. What a beautiful look at the the, the English countryside and, and different elements. Um, for any of you, 
Um, can you talk to like what it was like being immersed in 18th century England? We came one time to um, somewhere in Oxford and they pretty much built a whole mm. village. Yeah, in the true. first episode where you see Nell ride in, mm. they built all of that. And that was just, um, it's so good. And it's um, it's such a privilege because you, you there's a lot less acting you have to do when everything is built there for you and you're not imagining it. And in fact, when you step out of it to, you know, get your makeup done and you sit in this bright chair and you see light bulbs, you're like, oh, electricity. Mm. Um, but, um, <laughs> it's, it's, mm. it's magical. What the, the people, um, the, our set building team were just amazing. Mm. Fantastic. Well, all three of you, thank you so much for helping me with my 18th, 18th century uh, style. Mm. Uh, again, all three of you are excellent. I can't wait for more people to watch this show. Uh, and lastly, any, I, I love your uh, poetry, man. I've been, I've been researching you and Ode to a Bully is fantastic, no, I gotta say. No, yeah. wow, thank yeah. you so much. That, me that means a lot, thank you. No worries, awesome, <laughs> cheers folks. Welcome to the Geek Centric Podcast. My name is Nate, how are y'all doing today? Good. good. Really good. How are good, you? Thank you? I get to talk to you, lovely folks. So I'm <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm I'm a big fan of all three of you and uh, this entire show. Having watched all eight episodes, uh, I can really tell it's it's something special, and you're all fantastic in it. So thank, thank you, you so Thanks much. For this, thank you for watching. Um, absolutely. I mean, it's it's got all the vibes in a in a, a show that I love. Um, but I'd love to know from each of you, uh, how would you describe your characters? And if you could sort of give me some insight into what it's like playing these uh, deliciously evil characters <laughs> in the world of Renegade now. Uh, and Adrian, I'd love to start with you. Uh, firstly, thank you for deliciously evil. Yeah. Uh, we like that. Going to keep that put in the box. Yeah. Um, uh, the the playing Poynton was a lot of fun. It's great to play a character that is bad because actually um, you you have more to choose from your your actions. You can choose from more things. You're not bound in by morals or <laughs> caring about how anyone else feels. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You will literally do anything you want to to achieve your goals, um, and he was he was great fun to play, and that's really also what attracted me to the script. Awesome, Alice. How about yourself? Sophia is so fascinating to me, and I really fell in love with her journey. The writing is so fantastic. Uh, I love how kind of silent she is in the beginning, <laughs> and I I think she has a lot stewing. Um, and she's ruminating. She's really smart, and 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 doesn't really get the chance to to be fully in her, in her power, in her voice. And through the arc of the story, by trying to protect her family and learning um, about Nell and you know these magical elements, she's able to really kind of let loose a bit of this thing that's been inside her, I think, for a long time. So that was really exciting. And uh, the obvious, like, it's so fun to be in a period show and work in London and, and you know, all of the really fun things as an actor you get to uh, put on to enhance your character uh, was such a treat. Yeah. When you said London just there, I heard a bit of the accent coming out <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Try to, I try to just keep it, keep it in so I don't she's lose it. She's one of us. She's one of us. <laughs> You're losing her. She's coming to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we've got her now. We yeah, got her. Yeah. <laughs> I did fall in love with London. <laughs> He'll say that. <laughs> Jake, how about yourself? Um, yeah, kind of all of it. I mean, deliciously evil is a great way to put it. Um, I think if you lean into it, I think, and I think that's the the way that uh, Thomas should be approached as a character is that he he loves being the villain mm. for at least a moment. Um, <laughs> and I think uh, getting to play someone that I felt like I couldn't really pre-plan. He's a very impulsive person. And the choices have to be impulsive and getting to it with these guys is an unbelievable experience. And getting to go toe to toe with Louisa Holland, who mm. plays now, who's just one of the greatest actors, like mm. truly. And when you're on with her, you're on. And um, yeah, it's a crazy experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think you folks mentioned uh, some dark magic. Adrian, uh, is, you know, in the trailer, we see Poynton uh, gets to practice a bit of necromancy. Uh, in the show, if you had that ability, who would you bring back and puppeteer for a day? <laughs> That's a great. This is the most disturbing. I love question. it. Come on, Adrian. What yeah, a question! Who, who would, would I bring, bring back? back? 
Well, okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> just gonna just like okay. So if you bring them back, they're gonna look like the guy I brought back. So I kind of uh, not yeah. want to bring anybody back. <laughs> I'd, I I'd maybe want to talk to people. Who you're gonna, okay. They're like, you know, there you talk go. You to some great leaders. But I want to bring them back because I just get this feeling they're going to look like Hearn. Uh-huh. And they're going to need some Nivea and a little bit of time, <laughs> a, little bit of time in the steam room. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. they're going to need some like physiotherapy a little bit. If, yeah. I, you know, just, but it, so yeah, I just like talk to people. I'd love to, I'd love to have a, a dinner where I could talk to various people and invite mm. them all. Great leaders. Absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very civilized art magic, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just your voice. Just your voice. Can I come in person? No, no, no. no, no. no. Just your voice. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. your voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd have to get an extra giant tub of Nivea for someone like uh, Hearn. But, oh, yeah. um, um, you know, uh, Alice, this show and, and all its locations look gorgeous. Uh, where did you shoot the show and what was it like being immersed in 18th century England? Where were we? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, sure we, we should actually probably. Where were we? We were in we were I, like Oxfordshire, I was in, like Surrey, yeah, Ealing Studios. I was in sure. Ealing, and then we we kind of traveled around, around the countryside. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. It was like uh, all two hours was out in Oxfordshire. Yes, your house. Where was your house? Don't no remember. idea. Okay, oh, no. no idea. We went so, all over the place. Yeah, to shoot it. yeah. But the locations wow. were amazing, unbelievable. Right? These castles and the gardens and everything was just, yeah. You kind of were like how how insane it is to have lived here mm, yeah the odd such history yeah. I think you, you, did you say that comment we were shooting in buildings that were older than the western sort of side of, right. of america right 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 <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> of, its, of its western history we were we were in buildings that were older than that yes and it's kind of like a <gasps> yeah mm. and you don't want to touch that's, anything yeah. <laughs> you're not allowed to touch anything. you're not allowed to touch anything yeah. <laughs> and it probably makes your jobs much easier i'm yeah. sure to to get into uh, your roles, um, you Absolutely. know, like we discussed, uh, unlike yourselves, uh, your characters are not the nicest of people. So <laughs> um, indulging in a moment of kindness. Uh, and Jake, I mean, you already said some really nice stuff, but I'd love to know about your co-star sitting next to you. Uh, you're going to get a little uncomfortable here. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, you know, what's what's maybe the nicest thing you could say about them? Or is there something you admired about them on set? <laughs> so much. So much. Where to begin? Where to begin? Where to begin? I think um, with, uh, with Alice, um, the relationship on screen is so valuable, but the relationship off screen she really does feel like a big sister that's very sweet which has been really lovely and you know it's hard when one of your castmates who plays your sister lives in new york i know i don't get to see it very often <laughs> um but getting to getting to work with al especially we were thrown in quite at the deep end mm-hmm. when we started shooting um uh, alice and i especially with our with our kind of scenes and i think we kind of held each other's hand through it and i was mm-hmm. very grateful for that and then i've said this before but i mean the relationship of Thomas and Poynton is one of uh, mentor, mentee, someone you look up to. And, and I mean, that is Adrian to me. Mm. You know, I was at drama school watching his stuff. I was in school watching his mm-hmm. stuff. I, you know, I remember being I remember being at college watching um, Othello and way before I ever thought I would get to be an actor and stuff. So, mm. I yeah, I can't believe I get to do this with them. So. <laughs> I love them both Excellent. very much. We love you. All the all the love. Um, <laughs> now, okay, for my my last question, kind of a a silly sort of question, but all three of you get to rock some incredible outfits Real. on this mm-hmm. show, yeah. uh, and I know we've just met, but I'd love to get some 18th century uh, style tips from Ooh. each of you, starting uh-huh. with Jake. Great. Should I go with the powdered periwig or a tricorn hat? Very good question. Um, <laughs> I think if you want to if you want to give unaccountable villainous toff, you go with the periwig. It's good for <laughs> underneath the periwig for Thomas specifically. He has lice. If you look closely <laughs> at Thomas's haircut, which I donned for eight months, there were holes in the side of my head. Um, wow. So you keep the periwig on to not let anyone know about your hygiene. That's mm-hmm. why I'd go with that. Mm-hmm. That's my tip okay. To you. All yeah. right. Well, they're, they're asking me to rap, so I was okay. going to ask you if oh. I should put a corset on, but I think that's oh yeah, that's a must. You know, Definitely. Always. Definitely uh, corsets. <laughs> all right. Well, all three of you, thank you so much for helping me uh, with my 18th century style and for answering some of my silly questions. <laughs> thank all thank you. All three of you, again, are just so good in this show, and I can't wait for more people to see it. So thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.